And we have some breaking news from Capitol Hill. Republicans have just chosen yet another nominee for Speaker of the House after a couple of failed attempts. I want to bring in now Manu Rajo Drew over on Capitol Hill. Manu, uh, the fourth time's a charm. What's going on right now on the Hill? actually a real warning sign yet again for Republicans as they name their fourth nominee in just three weeks. Mike Johnson was named the nominee Republican from Louisiana, won the majority vote in his conference with 128 votes just moments ago. But there's a real warning for him and concerns about his ability to get the 217 votes he will need to be elected Speaker of the House. That's because there are 44 votes who voted for other candidates. 44 Republicans voted for other candidates. 43 of those voted for former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. And that is causing enormous tension in the room next to me. Some members believe that McCarthy is intentionally undercutting Mike Johnson's ascent to the Speakership. And others, including Mark Green, who is a candidate in this race, once he learned that some of those candidates were voting for Kevin McCarthy, said that people were playing games, and he decided instead to endorse Mike Johnson, all raising more concerns about whether the Republicans, after three weeks of gridlock, of infighting, of, a, of a dealing with a leadership crisis that has left the House completely paralyzed, can actually get out of the crisis that they themselves caused here because of the fact that even though they have another nominee who has a majority of the support within the Republican conference, this person at the moment, Mike Johnson, does not have the 217 votes he needs to be elected speaker, raising even more questions, Abby, about how they will resolve this, who could come next, what the next plan might be if nothing changes in the next 24 hours or so, as all these huge issues wait for, that, for the House to act, whether it's dealing with Ukraine aid, Israel aid, or taking steps to avoid a government shutdown, none of that can happen given this infighting that is happening in the Republican Party, the inability to get behind a candidate, and the aftermath of the ouster of the speakership just three weeks ago, something that they have yet to resolve as they remain battling behind the scenes about how they should resolve this, Abby. It is really incredible that this is still going on. And as you point out, the chaos isn't over. The, their nominee still doesn't have the votes to become speaker as of right now. Manu, thank you. We're going to stay close uh, as the, this develops tonight. I'm also going to be talking to one of the Republican lawmakers who was just inside of that room voting and deliberating on speaker candidates. He'll be up in just a few minutes. But first, I just want to bring in now CNN senior political commentator Adam Kinzinger. He's a former Republican congressman himself. He was also on the House January 6th committee uh, to react, uh, Adam, to uh, everything Everything that you just heard Manu say, they cannot come up with a speaker. And, and I want to just add one more factor in here, too. All of the last can few candidates who were just up tonight, uh, they all voted to not so certify the last election. Uh, and uh, this is where things stand right now. What do you make of it all? Well, let me first off say it's a good night to be a former Republican member of Congress, because otherwise you're going to be up till 10 o'clock and continuing to battle each other. Here's the thing I think people need to understand. What this division that you're seeing playing out in public actually isn't new. My entire time in Congress, this was a dynamic that existed within the GOP conference. The difference is the we'll call them the moderates for the sake of argument, the people that are kind of like, you know, let's work together as a team. They're actually standing up and fighting back for the first time ever. If you think back 12 years to anything that the Republican majority since 2010 tried to do, there was always a group of people that was you know, taking it down. You look at the Obamacare repeal and replace bill, which I actually think the one we had created was good until the far right came in and said, no, we want to make sure there's no protection pre for pre-existing conditions. They're always coming in and throwing bombs. And now you're actually seeing the regular folks actually fighting back against that. And right now, look, Mike Johnson, I mean, I'll tell you, the guy started out fairly normally and then went really deep into Trump when he realized that's what it took to get reelected. Um, so I, he, he may have the same issues Jim Jordan does, as long as the so-called moderates continue to try to fight back. I think we're going to see a point eventually, if I had to predict where this was going to go, it's either going to go into people need to just elect uh, Patrick McHenry, who, frankly, everybody likes. He's just reluctant to do it. He doesn't want to be speaker. I don't blame him. Or ultimately, a deal has got to be cut with the Democrats. Um, but we'll see. I think Mike Johnson will be a good test for everybody to see if kind of a, a 
regular name, not really a controversial name, can win this. And if he can't, then I think they're, we're going to have to start thinking outside the box. Mike Johnson, the GOP conference vice chair, he's also the deputy whip for the Republican conference. As you point out, not really a household name, uh, but also not someone who got more votes than the last person who was the speaker designee. So it's hard for me to see. The math is not mathing on any of this. Um, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thank you. You bet.